So this is why it took Joe so long to start coming down to the Keys. We are stuck in traffic on this like one lane in, one lane out highway. Uh, we actually just got uh, a notification from our maps that if we turn down a single street, we could actually cut 45 minutes off of our journey. So heck yes, we are going to be turning down that street. Yeah, so we are heading down to Fiesta Key and we have 12 miles to go. That's it. And it is actually saying that that 12 miles is going to take an hour and 20 minutes to go. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy campers. campers after losing a combined weight of more than 200 pounds. We realized we had so much more energy for activities. Come along with us as we explore the great outdoors. And join us on a brand new adventure. You know, we're going to have to change our opening because we say more than 200 pounds, but you have now lost over 170 pounds. Yeah, it's so been it's a lot of pounds. So it's almost like 300 pounds, not 200. Together as a combined weight, yeah. yeah. So... We are here in the Florida Keys, just south of Al Morada, and uh, we're super excited to be here. We haven't been out in the RV since the Florida RV Super Show. Yeah, and this is a first for us as far as staying at like a resort here in the Keys and not at a state park. Yeah, we're really excited about this. Generally, we come down here, we stay at Beyonda or uh, we stay Curry at Hammock. Curry Hammock, or we've even been to John Pennekamp. Now my favorite has always been beyond it. If you can get a waterfront site, which if you're patient and you're really watching the site, you can get that. But a lot of times it's like a last minute thing. Like you'll go online and like, oh, there's a campsite open tomorrow. Well, and we don't have the open as schedule as we have had in the past, right? right? So we really wanted to be able to book a trip ahead of time. So this was really nice that this was open. Yeah, and you know, unfortunately, I am a high school lacrosse official. We just finished up the season. So during lacrosse season, it's very difficult for us to get out camping because I generally officiate at least one, if not two games, six days a week. So it's nice to get down here. The weather is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Uh, not too hot. There's a slight breeze. And I'm really excited about checking out this campground. We're gonna talk about it more later on, but honestly, I'm excited because it's literally costing us more than half off of what we would normally pay even to stay at like one of the state parks. That's crazy. Also, Rachel, since the last time you guys saw us, has picked up scuba diving. Well, Joe picked it up and I'm along for the ride sometimes, right? Yeah. Because I'm still Not as much used... as me still getting used to um, the depths to which you have to scuba. They make you scuba under the water, yes. as I understand well, that's it. that's scuba diving, right? Self-contained breathing apparatus. Yeah, so I have to go a little bit deeper, and I'm going to be going on a boat dive or two boat dives with Joe this, uh, this week. Yeah, and what we're really excited about is next month, we're going on a cruise for our keto channel. It's a keto cruise. Everybody on the boat is not keto, just 350 out of about the 7,000 passengers. We'll eat all the meat. But uh, one of the places we're going to is Roatan, and Rachel's been doing mostly beach diving. She's had two dives off of a boat, has been a little nervous about jumping off a boat, but I think you're getting better at it. You realize like, hey, it's actually easier to just jump off rather than wade in. Right? It's really nice not having to drag all of your gear up and back from the beach. I'm not gonna lie. The fact that you can just get on a boat and get off the boat is really nice. Yeah, so the goal this week is relax because we have a lot of conferences coming up for our keto channel and we're gonna be doing a lot of traveling. So we wanna relax. We wanna get Rachel some experience jumping off of a boat. And honestly, I've never been diving in the Keys. So I'm interested to see- Clear water, she Clear think? water. The reefs down here, I mean, I dive every week up in Fort Lauderdale and technically it's the same reef system, but it's a different reef system at the same time. So we're gonna have different species of fish down here. Maybe we'll run into some sharks. I, oh, I hope not. <laughs> 
So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna relax the rest of the night. We're gonna go around, we're gonna explore this campground. Lots of amenities to have here. They have a pool, they have a restaurant, they have like a little store. Uh, and then we're gonna see what's going on. And then tomorrow we're gonna head out and go do some diving. Good morning. Good morning. Day one here at Fiesta Key. And I have to say, I'm impressed. I mean, we got in last evening and, you know, we didn't know what to expect. We have never stayed at what I've always called a parking lot RV resort. Right. I think we, well, we sort of went to one when we were like coming back what in like Georgia from, yes like, like a one long. night kind of thing but, but it wasn't this, like a camping trip it was just a layover well and this feels really like a resort this is a beautiful place I could totally see bringing the whole family here because even if they don't have um, a rig of their own you can rent you know cabins and actually just like stand alone cabins which is really really nice yeah so in the past and up until now we have only ever really camped at florida state parks and there's lots of them yeah. florida state parks are relatively inexpensive especially for what you get uh even the keys ones are pretty inexpensive if you can get a spot, which is not always easy. I mean, right. we've stayed at all of the different, like, you know, state parks that offer RV spots here in the Keys. And we love them all. Our favorite's still beyond, but very, very difficult to get them. And when we were at the Florida RV Super Show, we ended up getting a Thousand Trails camping pass, just right. a camping pass. And then we added on the Encore parks so it wasn't super expensive it was somewhere around eight hundred dollars or so and this one trip almost pays for it yeah absolutely because i mean like you said we used to always like just get what we could get in you know the the keys when it was available but if you have to work around any type of schedule and and we do we're kind of like busy during this season i can't just like go with an opening i really yeah. need to schedule a trip during these you know summer months so it was important for us to get it in and i'm really glad that we could use this vacation package in order to 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 get the the camping in i'm i'm trying to like manipulate the camera and hold my cup so here's the thing is we didn't know what to expect with the camping pass because again for us it's always been we want to be out in the woods but when you come to the keys 
you, you're not going to spend all of your time in your campground. No. So who cares what you're sitting in? For us, we want, we're going diving today. Um, we want to go to the beach. You want to go paddle boarding. You want to go explore some of the other keys. You know, we're here and we're about five minutes, 10 minutes south of Isla Morada. You're about 30 minutes north of Marathon. So lots of things to do. You're you're only about 40 minutes if there's no traffic south of Key Largo. So a lot of different things to do in the area. And I'm really, really impressed with it. I'm, I'm glad that we got the camping pass. Now we didn't get the one where you have that whole big membership. This is just the annual camping pass. Now coming here to the Keys, it costs us 20 bucks a night. You really can't beat that. And then when we go to other places, like we're going to be going up to some resorts up near Ocala, those are free. So that to me is not that bad if you're going to do a decent amount of camping if you're going to go out five or six times you know it will honestly pay for itself but like i said this trip alone pays for itself because this trip if we didn't have the thousand trails camping pass it would cost us 160 dollars a night for our right. spot and so we're paying 20 so if you go 160 dollars a night times four nights like we've almost covered our camping pass on the very first trip okay so in order to get to the pool you got to go up these steps they've got it like built up so that in case there's a high tide you don't lose the pool now of course they have like a deep section and then they have a shallow section and the toddler pool is my favorite part because i like to just sit in the water and relax this is my idea of total relaxation is just coming into the pool and being able to just relax and enjoy the beautiful skies and the palm trees. So the pool is open from sunrise to sunset and so is the hot tub. And this is really where Joe can lose me for an entire day because I am content to just sit here in the hot tub the whole day. They actually have two of them. So they have one over here and then there's another one over here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Rachel, we're supposed to be going diving. Oh, are you sure? Yes, we're going diving. <laughs> Does that feel good? Feels so good. Well, guess what? When the diving trip will be over by like five o'clock, so you'll be able to come back. Since you know where you'll find me Sunset after that? is until about 8 p.m., so you'll, you'll have your whole evening here in the hot tub. Okay, so let's take a look at the menu, especially with the prices. It looks like appetizers are anywhere between like $13 and $28, depending on what you want. I mean, obviously lobster tail bites are gonna be uh, way more expensive, but there's lots of different entree options like uh, filet mignon, grouper, which you could get blackened or grilled, which is really nice. And they will cook your own catch. So if you are successful in your fishing during the day for just $18, they'll actually clean it and then serve it with two sides of your choice, which I think is actually really cool. So I have to say, taking a look at these prices, I'm pretty impressed because again, we're on a key that doesn't have restaurants. Like yeah. again, when you go down to Marathon, there's Tons restaurants galore. When you go up to Isle Morada or you go up towards Key Largo, lots of restaurants, but there's nothing here. Like there's no pharmacy on this island. There's no like Publix or Winn-Dixie, anything like that. So there's nothing here. There's, there's I think one gas station and they were charging like $5 a gallon compared to all the other keys where it's like 360. Right. So these prices- Really good. Like honestly, they're like regular restaurant prices if you go to Fort Lauderdale. And again, you got fresh fish, they got a kid's menu. And look at the scenery. It doesn't look like Texas Roadhouse out there, right? Like it is absolutely gorgeous out there. Now they do have a small market at the, the front where you can get some just like essentials, buy some souvenirs and then get, you know, some items for maybe like a light breakfast. So as you can see, it is super beautiful here and you couldn't get any closer to the water. It actually feels like you could just like step out right on top of the water. There's actually a get in stairs over here so that you always have um, water and, and beach access. And this is just a really nice spot. And honestly, like, uh, I, I'm I'm totally cool with like eating here at the restaurant, just grabbing like a hamburger patty or something. You know, I think it's really nice and accessible and I can just relax. We can spend all of our energy relaxing because when we come to the Keys, 
I feel like Joe. I don't even want to cook. I just want to relax. It is absolutely beautiful here. There's lots of outdoor seating on this like beach that they've created. So it's really nice to have beautiful views as you're enjoying a drink or having a snack and then lots of beach chairs and access to a pool and a hot tub. So I feel like right here on the beach is the absolute best seat in the park. So much beautiful views of the ocean all around you. Just really, really relaxing space. I think you should go check out the water temperature since we're about to get in the water anyway. Let's do it. Okay, so they have these great stairs back here, but like be careful, it's a little bit slippery. Um, but this is really nice and they even have a swim platform over there. It's a little bit cool this morning, but with the hot sunshine, I think that it's going to be the perfect balance. Okay, so is it cool for a Floridian or is it a cool for everybody? It's a, it's cool for a Floridian. Yeah, because I know that even diving up by our house in Fort Lauderdale, the water temperature is currently 78 degrees. So this is going to have to be close to the same. So if you're not from Florida, 78 degrees is probably like, Bathtub water. yeah, but you know, from Florida, maybe not like this is wetsuit swimming for us. Okay, you were worried. How'd you do? I did I did really well. I was really glad that we had a dive guide. Not that I don't trust you, Joe, but it's always nice to just follow the fins. <laughs> did you see anything cool? I saw lots of like more variety of parrotfish and there were a lot thicker schools of fish together. So if you enjoyed a particular like fish, it felt like there was 50 of them. You saw a cuda? I saw a barracuda and I saw a nurse shark on the bottom underneath the rock, but I didn't freak out.
and then uh, Goliath group, lots of groupers. There were some really Because they know you can't relax. catch them here. It was really, really nice. I know, it, I feel like you see bigger things, the more safer they are from people fishing them. <laughs> Okay, so you have to see this because this right here was why I was not going to get on the boat today. I saw, this was my first like taste of, hey, what's it like in Isla Mirada? So here's what it looks like where you get on the boat and I'm sure they'll come back around, but there's actually like a couple of sharks as well. But uh, there's one right out there. There he is right there. There's another one. But they're nerf sharks. They're not going to bother you. But here's the thing. The reason that all of these fish are here is because there's a bait bin right there. It's kind of like Ginny right now when Peyton is sitting in the high chair. And Ginny is just sitting right below there going, um, I know she's going to drop some. She's well, that's what these something. guys are like. They're like, they're going to feed me here. Yeah, there's a nice shark over there. There's one right there. You did it. I did. I got in the boat, and I'm telling you, it was who we were surrounded with. So we had a really nice uh, dive guide with us that just made me feel extra safe so that I could follow him and hold Joe's hand at the same time. I love the fact that somebody else guiding makes you feel more comfortable than me well i needed you that makes me feel so well, confident in your love for me i needed you to hold my hands i actually needed two people not just the guide like you couldn't just be the guide i need you to also hold my hand so we actually went diving with a place called key dives and i honestly did not know this but the fee for the dive which was like ninety dollars, ninety five dollars, or whatever. It includes your air, it right. includes weights, which most places, like even where I dive in Fort Lauderdale, they charge you extra. That's all extra. I mean, I always show up with air, but he was like, "Don't even bring tanks because we own our own tanks." So like, don't bring them. We're gonna give you tanks. We're gonna give you air, whatever kind of tanks you want, and it included a dive guide. So yeah. I feel like that's pretty good because, you know, that allowed me to get a lot of video. It allowed me to really focus on Rachel and we, and Rachel though like Hugh if he thought that she was close to his fins when she was learning how to dive like she literally like was getting kicked in the head by the dive guide and I was happy to be kicked in the head I want to be that close and it was interesting because he was like trying to point things out and she was like oh yeah I, I saw that already well and I think he was ex excited when I was like oh that's a lionfish he was like mm -hmm, it sure is but we saw uh, eel, we did see a nurse shark underneath a, a rock. But they're not gonna bother you. Nice big giant lobster, big lionfish, so many different parrotfish. Yeah. Um, parrotfish are cool and there's so are. many different colors of them. I guess that's why they're called the parrotfish. Angel fish. fish, just a lot of beautiful, beautiful fish today and nice, you know, clear blue water like you expect in the Keys. So we're gonna go back now and uh, I think we're gonna just relax. Rachel wants to go in the pool or in the hot tub. And then um, we're going diving, or I'm going diving again in the morning on the early boat. It's going to be on a deeper reef. Rachel's going to go as a ride along, uh, but she's not quite ready, like in her head, to go to 60 feet yet. But I'm you'll get there. Excited that I got from the truck to the boat today. Yeah. Rachel, what are you eating? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? nothing. Nothing, obviously. Nothing to see here. Is that good? Yeah, it is good. <laughs> Are you enjoying your vacation? Very relaxing. And more relaxation to come because I'm going to go get in the hot tub. So Rachel went down to the hot tub. I just uh, finished taking all of the videos off of my camera and put them onto the computer because I'm afraid I'm going to lose them. Plus, I ended up filling up the memory card. Evidently, I had some old dives on the memory card that I forgot to delete. So we lost like the last 10 minutes of the second dive, but that's okay. Um, we got plenty of footage. I'm not sure if we got the two lobsters that Rachel spotted. I'm hoping uh, we do, but I've got like two hours of footage because we had two almost hour long dives and I'm so proud of her. She did so well. Uh, when we first got to the dock, she saw all of those sharks and the tarpon that were swimming right around the docks. And she's like, I'm not getting in the water. I'm not getting in the water. I'm not getting in the water. And it can be scary, especially for a new diver. You know, you're not used to those big fish. You're not used to sharks. 
don't realize that sharks don't bother you, especially nurse sharks. I mean, honestly, calling a nurse shark a shark is like calling a cat a tiger. But when you hear the word shark, you think jaws. But sharks aren't like jaws. I mean, most sharks, they're just gonna leave you alone. They're afraid of us. You know, when you get in the water, they see all those bubbles. They're like, I want nothing to do with them. Um, but I know it is a scary thing, but she talked to Captain Bradley and a couple of other people and they're like, listen, you've been on the nursery in the Copenhagen up in Fort Lauderdale. It's the same thing. You're gonna see the same kind of stuff. And it was funny. She said, what about hammerheads? And he's like, well, I can't promise you you're not gonna see a hammerhead, but if you do, they're gonna ignore you. They, they don't wanna be bothered with you. And she got in the water, she did so well. Her buoyancy is really good. Uh, she's just doing really well as a diver and I'm really, really proud of her. So I moved all the videos over. Now I'm gonna head down and hang out with her at the pool. I've got a Redmond electrolyte. I found some in the cabinet and I was starting to get a couple of cramps at the end. So I know I'm a little low on my potassium. So I'm gonna drink one of these and uh, just hang out in the pool with her for a little while. Have you had enough of the ocean water? No, I haven't. You're just enjoying some chlorinated water for a while? I am going to sit wherever I can sit the shallowest and not like be moved around by the current. We must really be Florida wusses because the, what, 89 degree pool is too cold and we're over here in the hot tub. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Are you ready for your dive today? I am ready. We're heading back over to Key Dives. It's early. Um, we're doing the morning dive because I want to go to someplace a little bit deeper. Yesterday was amazing. Yes. And I have to say, I am thoroughly impressed with key dives. Me too. They really like calmed my nerves. They are definitely accustomed to dealing with people who don't dive frequently because I'm kind of a nervous diver. And part of that's because I don't have a lot of dives under my belt. So whenever we're diving someplace new and I'm like away from my normal surroundings, I get a little nervous and they really calm me down. Yeah. I mean, Rachel's only been diving since January. She does have at this point now 14 dives under her Yay! belt, which is not bad. I no. Mean, I've gone diving with people who've like, I've been diving for five years. How many dives do you have? Six. So, well, four of those were your certification dives. Right. So, um, but no, you know, when you first start, it can be nervous, especially here. You're in a new area. I know it did not help you to get out and see all of those tarpon and the sharks yes. right there at the dock. Maybe they move that area a little bit. It's like feed, you know, feed giant fish area right before you get on the boat where you're a little bit nervous about like, I wonder if we'll see any sharks while we go scuba diving. And it's like, oh, well, we'll see sharks even before we go scuba diving. Yeah. The thing about key dives that was really nice, and that's why we're going to go back out with them, is everything is included except for gear rental which right. they don't charge a lot of money for but you know coming from fort lauderdale where i go out every single week you know it's like 85 dollars, and that's just your boat trip that doesn't yeah. include your tanks or anything like that now we own our own tanks and i get everything filled at the shop so i never have to worry about that but that if you have to rent tanks generally it's like another 20 bucks oh like, yeah with your air fills and everything you know, most places they, ch they charge like $12 for an air fill, anywhere between eight and $12, depending on where you're going. You certainly don't get a dive guide and included. And they're also giving you a dive guide. So for people who are renting gear, they're setting everything up for you. They have everything all set up. And you know, we set up our own stuff, but people who rented, they had it all set up for them. And then you have a dive guide, which was nice for me because I could focus on Rachel. Yeah. I know she really enjoyed having a dive guy. I really did because he knew where he was going. I knew that we would be able to see everything there was. Like he would, you know, even his route around the reef area, I knew, okay, he knows where all the good stuff is. Like he knew where to find the moray eel and like, you know, where is there gonna be a little nurse shark to, to see and, you know, he made sure that we saw all of the coverage of the reef and I just felt really secure. He was super calm 
that helped a lot. And so we could just follow him. And, you know, Joe didn't even have to keep track of like where we were precisely. Although you could look up and see the boat, which yeah. was amazing. His visibility is great here. Well, in Well, that's Keys. what I was going to say for me. It was nice that normally if I go out with Rachel, like when I go on a drift dive, I don't worry. You just drop drift the boats up top somewhere. But when you do an out and back, which is what they did yesterday, um, you have to navigate. You have to kind of know this is the way I'm going and this is the way I need to go back. And so I am pretty good with navigation and underwater compass work, but I didn't have to because the guide, he's in charge of getting us back to the boat. So it, was it was nice. Really nice. So we just got here to Key Dives. I'm gonna pull my gear out and we're gonna head out on another boat trip. Are you ready? Yep. Are you gonna catch me a lionfish? Hopefully. You're gonna try your best? I'm gonna try. Bring your best. It's dinner. If they're babies, I'm leaving them. Did you catch something? Oh no, don't let him back in the boat. Did you see anything? Oh, uh, only one baby. I couldn't get him. Was it pretty out though? Yeah, very different reef. Very different layout than ours. Uh, I, I, it was um, It almost today. looked man-made. Really? Yeah, there's like these trenches and you would think that somebody laid these trenches. Very different. What about the um, like garbage? You're you're not you pulled up like one. I pulled one up string. one line, but I mean, again, when I'm in your Fort Fort Lauderdale, I never come up with more with less than four or five fishing lines, anchors, hooks. All right. Okay, guys. So we just finished up our dives, and I'm here with Mike, who is the owner, right? I'm the owner of Key Dives. The owner of Key Dives, and I was complimenting him about the reefs down here compared to Fort Lauderdale. I mean, you guys know I love to dive. I dive at least once a week out on all the reefs. In Fort Lauderdale and we have an amazing diversity of fish up in Fort Lauderdale but the reef itself you know like the corals are kind of smaller and I pull a lot of fishing line and garbage and I was telling Mike how awesome it is down here because there's really not much garbage I in fact I've seen in two days four dives one fishing line and what's the deal with that well, haven't we have a lot of garbage down here on on our reef down here well about four years ago we decided to take up arms and we got tired of seeing all that debris as well so in the last four years we removed with the help of our divers our recreational divers we removed over 20,000 pounds of debris that's wow. anchors that's chain that's fishing line that's fishing traps uh lobster traps you name it um bizarre items from from uh the, probably the weirdest item was a pink pink bb gun the weirdest thing i've ever seen um but you name it we've seen it and we've pulled it out and our reefs are much better for it and it's not an eyesore when you go swimming around on our reefs wow so now you were also telling me about this program this eye care program mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about this so we offer for recreational divers an opportunity to get involved in restoring our reefs Despite what Joe said, um, our reefs are in dire need of help. We have lost over 95% of the corals on our reef. That means we have less than 5% remaining. That's not a lot, and it's not self-sustaining. So we've started a program in partnership with Melt Marine and Reef Renewal every week planting coral. A whole host of coral species that you can get involved with. All you have to do is reach out to iCare. Uh, the website is icareaboutcoral.org. Find out when a trip is happening, and then right now we're running them every Saturday and then some additional trips during the week. Jump on, send an email, reach out, call, and we can get you on a boat planting coral and help us rebuild our reefs. Now, what does it cost to jump on that boat and help with planting the coral? The cost is the same as it is to make a two-tank dive. Wow. There's an additional $25 because we have to go through some training. We do a morning session. We'll teach you all about the history of our reef, what's happened, why, the signs behind the corals and what we were doing to repair them. And it also gives you an opportunity to tour the onshore nursery run by Mount Marine here in Isla Mirada. So for an additional $25 over the cost of a regular two tank dive, you're out there planting coral. That $25 is a donation to our foundation, I care. Wow, that's amazing. And I do want to compliment you again, coming down here, Rachel's a newer diver. 
Okay, I'm, I'm working on becoming an instructor and, and I, I mean, I've got like 50 dives since January, but she's a newer diver and it was nice to go out with your shop yesterday with her and to have a guide. I mean, where I was able to kind of just focus on her and enjoy and not have to worry as much and, and not have to navigate. Mm -hmm. It was kind of nice to just have somebody go, hey, I'm going to get you back to the boat on this out and back. So I have to tell you guys, if you're coming down to the Keys, this is where you want to come. You want to come to Key Dots. We're not affiliated with them. We don't make any money off them. Hey, we got hooked up to them by Hugh and Missy, and I'm so glad we did because you guys have an amazing shop. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys enjoyed yourself. Hope to see you guys out on the reef. So we're here at Porky's Bayside, and this is definitely one of our very favorite places to eat here in the Keys. They've got great daily specials, and I am a particular fan of their fried pork belly. So we've got quite the feast here because this is all of the stuff that they have on happy hour. So believe it or not, all this food is going to be less than 50 bucks. Yeah, and we have quite the variety. We've always liked appetizer food, even before keto, right? Because I liked a little bit of everything. So we've got chicken wings. Each of us had an order of chicken wings. Each of us have an order and a half of pork belly. We've got some beautiful uh, tuna, sashimi, and we've got some oysters. I know Rachel's not really eating oysters. She's gonna have one. I'm probably Oh, you forgot eat about the shrimp. More of this, which is the peel and eat shrimp. Okay, I wanna get lucky tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna eat most of them, but we got six oysters. We're gonna put some hot sauce on there. A little bit, hit it with some extra Redmond. There's horseradish. Oh, I love horseradish, hold on. There you go. Now we're ready. It's just a texture issue. That's delicious though. Really good. That was flipping awesome. It was like a taste of everything. I'm that person that they built a buffet around because I want a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And the fact that it was like chicken wings and oysters and shrimp and pork belly and tuna, like there was just something, every bite was delicious. Are you full? I'm full, but I'm not gonna like throw up, which I feel like is really good because we still have the rest of the day to enjoy. What are you doing? Getting some gum. Just kidding, getting fish food. You're gonna feed the fish? I am. Are you like five? Yes. You just spent like two days underwater. But look at these guys, look at how pretty. How often do you get to feed something that colorful? There's a reason they're hanging out here, you know. Yeah, I think they've learned, but you know what? For the same reason that all of those sharks and the tarpon were hanging out at the dock. Anybody bold enough to wear blue lipstick? Like you're my kind of fish. Every time we try to film a video. We could be on a deserted island where it's just me and you, and all of a sudden, if we turn a camera on, like a lawnmower is like, rrr, 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 let's go. We have to head home. Yes. I don't want to go home. I don't either. And, and looking around, there's open spaces. I know that we could drive up to the front right now and say, hey, I want to stay a couple One more days. More um, I, I would be like, you know, Three more nights. Hey, I mean, it is Mother's Day this weekend. Don't you want a Mother's Day present just hang out here? Yes, I do. But actually, you do have a Mother's Day present coming up because the kids are all taking you to Rodizio Grill on Saturday. We're avoiding the Mother's Day go out to eat deal. We're doing it on Saturday. Honestly, I think only Mother's Day could get me home right now. <laughs> so uh, very, very impressed with coming here. And it's funny, we're talking about we have to go home I give so much credit to full-time RVers because we've talked about, hey, I wonder if I could do that, but I don't know if I could handle moving. the moving every 14 to 21 days. Yeah. And it's not, I could handle the moving. I wouldn't bother me. I know it would bother you. I spread out when I unpack. Yeah. And so now you've got like everything spread out. So like I, if I could be more concise in my my packing and like what i get out once we like break camp my that would be better yeah. that would help for me i think the difficult thing would be if i lived in an rv full time i just am going to want to play all the time i'm right. not going to get my work done yeah it was so hard this week being in the keys going i have to work i mean yeah. when we got done with our sec our dive yesterday or my dive 
and Captain Bradley said, do you guys want to go out on the second trip? There was a part of me that was like, wait a second, Rachel's gear is in the back of the truck. She can handle the afternoon dive. We should do it. But I had work to do. And that would be difficult for me if we were full-time RVing because I would just be wanting to explore things. Something's outside. I know that you would not be able to handle, like, finding places well. Like, I look at our friends Phil and Stacy from Today is Someday. How they do it and never have plans. Spontaneously. You, you would, like, be just on me over that. I would totally, like, it, I would lose my, my stuff. So, uh, we have to head home, but we did want to, before we head home, I, hopefully this comes through with, with those uh, weed eaters. If it doesn't, we're you'll probably see us cutting somewhere and filming in our garage. Right. Um, I wanted to do a quick five things review of Fiesta Key. Now, normally we do a five things review and we show you all of the campgrounds uh, or the campsites, but here they're pretty much all the, the same, same except for summer water. So I'm going to just do some drone flyovers and let you see the overall uh, camp, you know, campsite and campground. Uh, but let's go ahead and do our normal five things review. We just spent like five minutes trying to figure out what is the order of the five things review. Because it's been a little while since we've reviewed a campground. And for the record. Rachel was right. Let's like have that as like a little bit of a short. And I'm going to have that as my screensaver on my phone. Rachel was right. Yay! So if you are new to our channel, we review all campgrounds based on five things. We talk about hospitality, amenities, the campsites themselves, stuff to do, and finally, would, would we, we recommend, recommend it? it? So, uh, like we said already, for the campsites themselves, we're just going to like kind of do a flyover. We're not going to do site-by-site -site tour. There's way too many campsites. I think it's like 384 if I remember off the top of my head. So let's talk about number one, hospitality. I'm going to tell you Again, we're north. We're used to like state parks, and maybe this is like this in all of like the Encore Thousand Trails parks. This is our first real experience with the Thousand Trails Encore Park. But I'm impressed. But hospitality was amazing. Okay, and we're gonna go right into booking online. I was able to book online. Now we have the regular camping pass, and then and so we have just the southeast region, and then we added on the Encore parks. And just booking it was super easy. Now, we can only book 60 days in advance, but I went on, I picked out our site, we ordered it, and I guess when we created our profile, I didn't put in there, like, how big is our rig? They called me, hey, can you just let us know how big the rig is so we That's can make nice. sure we have a good spot for you? They were sending us reminder emails. When we got down here, you pull up to the front, we didn't even have to go inside. The guy came out on a golf court, the security guy. He checked us all in. Super he went knowledgeable. over everything. Super friendly. And showed us like where we could go to find another living human person if we had any questions or concerns. He showed us like where to, you know, place our garbage, which was really nice. I'm used to like not take, you know, not having that. I guess that's part of amenities, but like it was really, really nice for them to just tell us everything and even help us get into our space. Yeah. So after the security guy checked us in, somebody else came over on the golf cart and he directed us to our spot, told us all the different things about garbage pickup, everything else, um, really kind of just reviewed everything. Then after that, we did have a little issue with the vacuum valve on our water where it was spurting out and they have a text message system here. And so I just texted and within 10 minutes, somebody was here putting Hello. a new valve on. So like to me, that was awesome. Everybody that we met here was super friendly, all of the staff. And then just in general, like, I mean, camping though, everybody's generally friendly anyway. Yeah. But the staff here, super, super hospitable. Uh, so number two, 
amenities and you've already mentioned the one that you really like is the garbage having the garbage taken care of was really really nice um i didn't have to think about it or lug it you know to some far off place so that was that felt like a really big treat they have uh laundry services here that take credit cards that so you don't need credit things. cards thank goodness it is really really nice to just have access to that and that is a treat that i like to enjoy for myself is going home with clean laundry there is a beautiful dog park here so if we're bringing uh our fur baby jenny or tabitha it's nice to know that they have a place for them now they're not welcome on the beach or in the pool area but that's normal but that is absolutely normal um and then speak of that beach and pool area those are some nice amenities over there yeah so you've got that you got playground you got hammocks you got games uh you have the restaurant you have the store uh, internet service. Uh, I checked all of our different carriers. Everything had good service for internet and for cell phone. And then we did put up our Starlink. And Starlink here had amazing service. And the cool thing is, is there's no trees over any of the campsites here. So you don't have to worry about like overhead stuff. Like when we go to state parks, it is something you have to think about. Recently, we let the kids use our RV to go to Easterlin Park and I couldn't put up the starling because there's overhead trees. So yes, the overhead trees are great for shade and stuff, but at the same point, if you're running starling, can't really use that. But we had really good service, like 200 megabit per second download, like 30 megabit per second upload. So that was really good. Uh, now, as far as amenities, I would also say one thing that they do lack, not on site, but in the general area is on this particular key, there's no grocery stores. Right. There's no pharmacies. Uh, there's one gas station that charges a lot more money than any of the other keys. So when you're coming here, unless you don't mind constantly doing 30 minute drives, Bring I what you need. highly advise stopping on your way down and getting what you need. Like we always do that. We don't like to travel with just all that extra weight of food and soda and water and, and that kind of stuff. So what we'll generally do is stop at a grocery store close to where we're going. We do the same thing if we're gonna um, go ahead and boondock, we fill up water when we get close and then get everything. But don't wait until you get here because you're 30 minutes away from Publix, Winn-Dixie, Walgreens, all of those kind of things. So that, that would be the only negative when it comes to amenities. And that's not their fault, that's just the location. Yeah, so number three, campsites themselves. Okay, I, I have to say it, it is, a parking lot RV park. But you're not gonna wanna stay in your RV anyway. Like right. there's so much to do, even like at the RV park itself, I'm gonna be in the in the water. I'm yeah. gonna be at the beach. I am going to be in a lawn chair over there, which means I don't have to set it up here at my campsite. I'm gonna be in the pool. I'm gonna be in the hot tub. Like. To me, this is one specific place where it, it's a parking lot, yes, but I'm not gonna park myself here anyway. Now, I have some good things to say. Yes, it is a parking lot, and we're used to, you have a big space with privacy, trees separating you from your neighbors, and there's something to be said about that. But I will say this. First of all, you've got full hookup at every site. That's, that's number one. You know Rachel loves that. Full hookup, so, we are trying to practice boondocking a little bit. So what we did, we did, I filled up our tanks for, with water and we ended up not using that because I think I've got the water down, but we wanted to see like showers and like how long will it take us to fill our tanks. So I did not empty my tanks until today when we were leaving, but it is nice to know that I don't have to now go pull up to the dump station when we leave. Because yeah. usually when you go to the state parks, most state parks, the dump is not at your site. You have to leave and then dump. So it's nice to know that we're gonna go hook up. And you're and, done. And we're all dumped. Uh, also, the sites are gravel. They're not padded, but they're very level. Like we didn't really have to do any kind of leveling side to side. I like the fact that it's a, a thicker gravel. Some of the sites, especially Bahia yes. Onda, it's little pebbles and that end everywhere. up in your shoes and yeah. all of that stuff. So true. It's not like all over like our shoes and inside of our RV. Yeah, you do have um, a concrete pad that has a picnic table on it that we're sitting on. 
the sights are pretty long and they're very wide. Honestly, these sights are a lot wider than even John Pennekamp. If you remember when we went to John Pennekamp, it was literally like reach out and touch your neighbor. Right. Remember that? You open up the door and reach you could touch out, the rig touch of your neighbor. Someone. So we have right here, the RVs behind us, we're in our spot. We're sitting on a table. And then if you look, our spot actually goes, you can't really see it, but at the end oh. of the bumper, there is the sewer hookup over there. Right. That is how far our spot goes. So you have enough room to park your vehicle next to your rig. Yeah. Like you can park next to it. So if you want to have like a canopy, if you want to bring like a portable screen house, you have plenty of room for that. And I will say that even at like Bia Onda, you don't have that much no. width on many of the sides. Because remember, you're in the keys. Yeah. So... I will give it that. Um, now, moving on to stuff to do, some of it goes along with amenities. So what do you have here? You have a beach, you have a pool, you have a hot tub, you have games, uh, there's hammocks. Safe area for biking up and down for the kids is really nice. Yeah, playground. I mean, there's so many things to do here that you could literally come here and feel like you're in a resort and you don't have to leave the resort right. they even have activities at night like music and dances and things like that so you could literally like just spend five days here and, and not leave. leave but now you're in the key so you're gonna want to leave so along with the stuff to do you can go scuba diving uh within 15 20 minutes you could rent boats you can go deep sea fishing right, right where we went scuba diving they have deep sea fishing right there in that same place. It's like Bud and Mary's Marina, all kinds of things there. Um, if you go up to uh, Key Largo, Isle Morada, you've got Bass Pro Shops. You can go parasailing. You could rent boats. There's some museums local. Yeah, all kinds of things that you can do down here. And again, when you're in the Keys, you can do anything. You can go paddle boarding, you know, kayaking. Turtle nursery. Yeah, so plenty to do as always when you come down here to the keys and then finally would we recommend it heck yes and i've got to say i wasn't expecting to like this like i was expecting that because it's a parking lot that i wouldn't enjoy it but i have to tell you like i really loved coming here in fact oh this is gonna be hard to say but I would probably choose this over one of the state parks because of having like the pool and the hot tub access because in the evenings when you are unwinding from a very salty day, it is so relaxing to have that. And then for there to just be so much staff here, I mean, it really feels like a resort experience and the price point with our vacation package makes it possible for us to like, you know, have this really glamping experience down here in the Keys without it costing us an arm and a leg. So since you did bring up the cost, the price, yeah, you can't be $20 a night. No. You can't be $20 a night. And honestly, when we were at the Tampa RV show, we spent some time talking to Warren and Sharon Lewis. And that's who we ended up getting our thousand trails package. And again, we don't have the big one where, you know, you can book 90, 120 days in We're advance. Weekend it's, warriors. it's a weekend warrior kind of thing. Like there, when you add on the Encore parks, there's a lot of places to stay in Florida. So we're going to start utilizing it a lot more. But honestly, this trip alone pretty much paid for our pass. And it's one of the reasons I want to do it because it is so hard to get into the state campgrounds down here in the Keys. And we love coming down here to the Keys because we love the water. The only place that I would say I would prefer to stay over this down here in the Keys at this point would be if we could get a waterfront site at Bia Onda. Yeah. That, that is the only place where I'd be like, okay, I'll take that. But if I can't be on the water at Bia Onda, I'd rather be here. If I have this over Curry Hammock, I'd rather be here. John Pennekamp. John Pennekamp for sure, because the sites are tiny. And honestly, the only advantage that John Pennekamp would have over this, in my mind, is the fact that it's a little bit further north. I mean, if you don't have traffic about 30 minutes, 
which makes John Pennekamp only about an hour and a half from our house. That's nice. But overall, I'd much rather be here because I'm close to the water. John Pennekamp, your site isn't even near the water. It is a long day. You have to take your car to get to the water. Right. Now, and I don't know if you can see that, like, patch of, like, those palm trees right there. That's the water access, and people were just dropping their paddle boards in right there. So yeah. we are parked very close to the entrance of this resort, but all we would have to do is inflate our paddle boards and bring it over there and drop it right in. So that's really nice, quick access to the water. Yeah, so I would absolutely recommend coming here. And honestly, even though this, this was something that we went back and forth of, I would highly recommend, if you're gonna do camping, I would say if you're gonna go camping more than four times a year, okay, four times a year. Yeah. I would recommend the Thousand Trails camping pass, like the one region, which I think is somewhere around $570, and then add on the Encore pass. It, you, you get the entire thing for less than $1,000, and you just have access to so many parks. And again, we got ours from Warren and Sharon. I'll leave a link from them below. Let them know that, hey, Joe and Rachel from Two Crazy Ketos uh, sent you over there. But they were great because if we had any questions, you know, if we needed help with reservations, they're there to help you. Um, they spent a lot of time talking to us. And it was something like, because Rachel's like, I don't want to be locked into like a timeshare. Right. But this isn't really a timeshare what we have. This is kind of just like you're prepaying for your camping. And it's nice because our next one is going to be in Eustis, Florida. And those are free. You only have to pay the $20 a night for the ones down here in the Keys. Right, exactly. Which makes total sense because, again, real estate in Key West, getting a spot for yourself is really challenging. But, yeah, I really love that it was like a no-pressure sales situation. If anybody knows me, they know, like, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a horrifying experience once going to one of those, like, timeshare things. Yeah. And so anything that's called, like, a vacation package just absolutely makes my armpit sweaty. So the fact that this was just a really easy, you know, I, I didn't sign away our grandkid, uh, like, right? We don't have to, like, pass this you pay on. for a year, and if you don't like it, you move you're on. You're done, right? Like, I didn't want something that's, like, going to la outlast our African gray parrot, right, of yeah. 70 years. So I was really excited excited about this once they broke it down of like you know how this isn't like you're all in for life yeah. so it was a not really a big membership program. it was a really nice experience and i'm glad that we're you know taking advantage of it and just to give you a, a quick example of how much did we save um for staying right now and i have not even looked up the winter rates right but staying right now if you're not a member of the thousand trails and encore here this site a hundred and sixty five dollars a night wow and how we much did we pay 20 bucks because again that's it's 20 dollars more with your encore pass but again when we stay up in eustis florida uh no charge at all we've got a premium site already booked so that one's coming uh within the next month we got a cruise to go on and then we're going to be doing that and you're going to be doing some diving in spring yes i'm really looking forward to that because that's going to be a totally new experience but those crystal clear waters like we got to get in those so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you hit that notification bell so that you're notified when that video goes up in the meantime we do need to pack up we do need to head home. We've got work to do for our keto channel. Uh, Rachel misses the kids. I, I miss do. the kids. Me too. We miss our chickens. And uh, we just, I don't want to go home, but we have to. So now please do us a favor. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you get anything out of it, hit the like button. It really does help build the channel, but it also lets us know what kind of videos you guys are looking to see. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Next time. Happy, Happy camping. camping.